Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, I want to welcome each and every one of you to the Amazing Love Church broadcast. Praise God. The glory of God is in this house. And I believe that the glory of God is in your house. In Jesus' name. And we just, whatever your need is, I tell you, we serve a God who is willing and is able. And so we just release the miracle working power to to wherever you are right now in Jesus' mighty name. Praise the Lord. And um, we have special guests with us here today. Um, we have the Grand, Grand Chief, Matthew Kuhncom, and his wife Mary with us here today. And um, they were just... It, I've known them for since 98 or so, and they were just there vacationing here, just were going to come and visit. And I really prayed, I just immediately, when I heard, I had a stirring in my spirit, and I just felt that, that there were some things that the Lord, that they were here on vacation, but the Lord sent them here with a real, with a breaker anointing to come and release something in the atmosphere, and so... We're going to have them share here today, but it's just, I'm so blessed. I was reading your testimony, and I know you'll probably share, but I mean, I just, from a little boy, six years old or something, taken out of his home, hundred miles, hundreds of miles away, and could have become very bitter and upset, but just taken away, suffered so many things, he can tell you about it, but instead of yielding to the plan of the devil, he yielded to the Spirit of God, and the Lord turned him around, and, and turned everything around for him, and um, he has served as the national chief of First Nations, I mean, this is all several nations, how many? Of a million people, yeah, and several several tribes, sixty tribes, and served as the president for them, and then with the Cree Nation for over twenty years, served as Grand Chief and um, of of the Council for Cree over twenty years, and, and so we the Lord has really sent a dignitary into our midst. And, you know, the Lord sends people with specific anointings. And here in the islands, I mean, we have, we have the indigenous people in the islands that, that have been here for how many years? And I really believe that there's revival. There has been a revival here in the 1800s, but there's another revival and awakening coming. But I really believe that the Lord has sent you here as a catalyst. And with your words and with your blessing, even over what the Lord is doing, I really believe there's going to be a release in the islands. And so we're very, very excited and blessed. And... Um, Matthew, if you would come and just take your liberty in the Lord here today. God bless you. Let's give him a good hand and welcome him today. I've always wanted to say that with Nick. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just greeting you in my own language. I'm a Cree from uh, Northern Quebec. We were in uh, Zambia a couple of years ago. And I just found out uh, they call me the Red Man. <laughs> 
But when we share the word of God, that is not the white man's word, neither is it the red man's word, it is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Yes, amen. amen. We're from northern Quebec. We're a small community of about 4,000 people. I'm with my wife, Marianne. We've been married for 42 years. Praise the Lord. Come September 17, we'll be 43. Two children. Excuse me. Two boys, three girls. That's five. I wish you were good in math. <laughs> and we have four grandchildren. Amen. You know, just to be here is a miracle. I'll tell you why. We believe in the principles of stewardship. The principles of sowing and reaping. We have sowed so, so much into the kingdom of God. Personally, financially. One of the things we've done was we sow into people. We pay their trips to come to meetings. Where there's a presence of God, where the gospel is being preached. All the way from where I'm from, down to Tampa. Ministers. Preachers. Because we love pastors. And a friend of us called and said, I'm going to pay for your trip. To Honolulu. Huh. Praise God. Hallelujah. Somebody Thank you, Lord. Amen. <laughs> amen. Whatsoever man soweth, only and only that shall he reap. Yeah. Amen. So I do not believe in chance. I do not believe in circumstances. We believe in divine appointments. Yeah. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. For there is a plan for this island. For this state called Hawaii. Plans to prosper you. Plans not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. For there is an attack on our families, on our children, on our nation. The only hope for our nation is to, to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. The enemy wants to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus said, I have come you may have life, that you may have it more abundantly, amen? amen? He wants to prosper you. He wants to bless you. Hallelujah. So if there's an attack on a family, on the nation, then we need men and women full of the Holy Ghost, full of the Holy Ghost and fire. Men who are, and women who are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We were in the beach. My wife is so good. We take care of God's house. We we'll take care of your house. My friend was washing my feet. It wasn't a religious thing. We were in the beach. <laughs> when he was washing my feet, uh, I looked and there was Mary and my wife. Talking to three gangsters, people that looked like they slap her in the face. Since we've been here, we led six people to the Lord. Amen. Amen. We are to do the work of an evangelist. John said, when you saw Christ, he said, Behold the Lamb of God, which takes away the sin of the world. And later he said that, <clears throat> that he was not worthy to lose the shoes. He said, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but there is one mightier than I whose shoes I'm not worthy to lose him. He shall baptize him with the Holy Ghost and fire. We cannot go out there with our own strength. Yeah. Yeah. 
We cannot go there with our own ability. We have to go with stability. And you will do it. Amen. God will give you boldness. You will not be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For he says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, greater works that you do, that I go with his father. You will have a great testimony. Am I confusing you? I'm walking around. <laughs> you, you okay? For I know I can tell you that the world does not have the answers. I've sat with local authorities, mayors, I've sat with the premier's meetings, I've sat with governors of the United States, I've met with presidents of the world, I made presentations to the UN, participated in drafting the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. They do not have the answers. But I can tell you, there is nothing like a Holy Ghost meeting. Yeah. When I walked into here, I felt the presence of God. Yeah. You see, under this presence, there is provision, and there is presence. There is healing. Yep. And there is presence. There is direction. Yep. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is this helping anyone or should I stop? <laughs> <laughs> See, the Word of God must be more real to you. More real to you than what the doctor is saying. real in you. But you know what's important? Is to know who you are in Christ. Yeah. Yeah. You know that God lives in you? Yeah. You know that Jesus lives in you? Yeah. You know that the Holy Ghost lives in you? Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Yeah. Hallelujah. You know, uh, in our community, I was born in a bush. I won't tell you the story, but I was not born in a hospital. I'm a son of a hunter, so is my wife. Very isolated community, not have access to work in 1978. If you came to our community, you would tell us you're the poorest of the poor. Deplorable. Look at your conditions. No housing. No sewage, no policing, no facilities, nothing. But then one day, a little old lady from Arizona, full of the Holy Ghost, not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, came into our community. She drove a van all the way to a place called Chape, in northern Quebec, from Arizona. From there, she took a dog team and traveled through the forest and the bushes and came to our community. There, she set up camp, started sharing the Word of God. Fifteen years she was there. Only a handful of people got saved. We would have felt that nothing happened. She probably would have thought I failed. Ah. Oh, in God's time, she planted the seed. Amen. And a revival broke out. Amen. Our people got touched. Yeah. Yeah. We were all born very rough. Alcoholic, out of alcohol, a lot of conceited. A lot of fights. It was so bad that even our dogs fought. <laughs> <laughs> but when we accepted the gospel of Jesus Christ, our community was totally changed. 
Because of one little old lady who was obedient to the call in her life, who was willing to be faithful. Preach the word. Preach the word. Preach the word. Fill up with the Holy Ghost. Pray for them. If you came to our community today, had nothing to wait when you grew up. Because at the age of 16, I still went down to the lake to get a pail of water. If you want to cook, you go fish, hunt. Then you're going to go cut wood, chop, split it, build a fire, and then you can eat. Now we're like you people. <laughs> <laughs> You know when you talk about being colonized? Indigenous people like to talk about being colonized. Without a fire and a bullet, you Americans know this, where do they put the indigenous people that do not reserve? Reservation that have no economic value. We're already sending third parties, mining companies, forestry companies, oil companies, check out the land. Report back and said there's nothing on the land, let's give it to the Indians, call it a reservation. Yeah. Um. Back up. Back up. I was chief in my community at a young age, 24 years old, it was that. Our community <clears throat> loved the Lord, prayed for the Lord. I was a young Christian then, but I knew that I knew that the Lord knew where I was, that I could ask whatever I wanted to. Anyone that I was with still, it ain't with me. <laughs> Stupid little idiot. <laughs> idiot uh, Anyone lacks wisdom? <clears throat> As for God's favor upon my life, man's favor upon my life, that I'll be able to do things that people only dream of, that I'll have a story to tell, that I will write my own history, that it will sing songs about me. That's what I thought of. I was young. And if I told you how I became chief, it would take me way too long, but just to give you an idea. I was at McGill University. I was writing my exams. I had no interest in leadership. And then they called me and said, I want you to be chief. We accepted the election at that time. 19 people that were nominated in the faculty. Now I didn't believe it. The called and said, No, I called 17 people. I couldn't reach one person. If any one of those 17 people said, If Matthew accepts, we will. I accepted that. Right? And then they had the uh, election. I never wrote a speech in my life. <laughs> What's that? But guess what? I asked the Lord what you would have me to do. Because I know that I became a lawyer. Uh, I could rip you off. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I could write you a good contract. <laughs> I knew I was going to, if I was to be chief, they would give me $300. And I told the Lord, I don't know how to write a speech. I was writing my exam, my exams, and they were ready to study. I went to bed. Middle of the night, the Holy Ghost woke me up and said, Take a pen and write. 
I began writing and started writing what I could hear from my spirit. The Bible says, my sheep will know my voice, a stranger to my father. For as many are the sons of God, they live by the spirit of God. Not by your emotions, but by your head. And I started writing. They said you have to deliver this speech. I delivered it. Fast forward five years later. There was a chief anymore. And guess what? It took an unbeliever to remind me because I'm there and I'm saying, Lord, did I miss it? He came to my office and he said, I remember when you gave that speech. He said, everything you said has come to pass. Told him thank you very much. I ran home. I asked my, my wife, where is the paper? It's in a trunk. Look for a trunk. Open it. Look for it. I started crying. See, God will lead you. Yes. God will guide you. God will show you the deep things of God. For when Jesus left the earth, he said that he was in a comforter. Counselor, helper, yes. intercessor, yes. standby, strainer. Um, and he will lead you, to guide you, and show you the deep things of God. That you're connected yes. into heaven. Yes. Inside information. Yes. I'm going to tell you how I became Grand Chief. I'll take you another hour. Grand Chief means that there are nine Creek communities. I was a team in communities and uh, became Grand Chief representing all the crews of our life. If God made a way, there was no way. But I will tell you this part that I have that costs money to do campaign. You know, it costs money for everything, right? Yeah. So I gotta trust God. You know, I'll tell you this part. So this, this chief calls me and says, hey, call the airport, there's a plane for you. You can fly into all the Greek communities. I'm talking about 450,000 square kilometers of land. Go fly into these communities and all that. And then I fly back, land. In one trip, I went to about four communities. Next trip, I went to five communities. On my way, he gives me a piece of paper calling in holes. <laughs> I look at it, 4,900 something. Did I have the money? No. Did I put my family in a hole? Uh, I didn't have made nothing. How did I come up with the money? So when I landed in a place called Shibu, it was actually locked out. There was nobody here. That airport is about 20 kilometers from town. I had asked the pilot if he could call his like that and the taxi. No taxi arrived. I was actually tempted to sleep there. I checked all the, the uh, cars and I found one of them with nice blankets. I said, I can sleep there. I was about to crawl in and I said, uh -uh. God made a way. I will ask him. I took my luggage, I went to the curb, put my luggage there. Praise God, thank you for taxi. <laughs> I could see a light coming. The taxi pulls in, and there was one of my cousins. She's so excited to see me. She says, the taxi wouldn't believe me. I said, we need to go to the airport. The taxi told me, there's nobody at the airport. No plane has landed. Why are you asking? to take you to the airport. I said I insisted, and here you are. <laughs> God will make a way when there's no way. I was supposed to be in a campaign. I went to a place of worship instead. <laughs> there was a camp meeting, I went there. <laughs> but you're trust this in your own. Not in your bank account. 
So there I am. I got a bill. They said, uh, we invite you to come to, uh, what do they call it, Dan office, you know? Back home, that's actually the White House. <laughs> I got invited to the White House. <laughs> it's the Dan office, you know? And said, this lady wants to see you. I go in there, it's about three, four people. Those three, four, four people said, you know, we did something here and uh, they threw these re receipts, receipt book, we piled them. You know, they, they threw it to me. They said, you know, I don't know why, but we, this is what we did. We asked people, you know, for the ministry. I started looking at this. Five bucks, ten bucks, ten bucks, five bucks, ten bucks, five bucks, ten bucks. I didn't look at the amount, I started looking at the names. And then they threw me the bank book. Guess how much it was in the bank? Four thousand nine hundred. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. God will take care of you. So you see, you and I are limited what we can do. You just look at your bank account. You ain't gonna move. You're gonna move. No matter how much anointing is in you, no matter how much Bible you know, how many you can quote verses you can quote, you will do nothing. But God will meet you when you take that step of faith. Yeah. That's where He'll meet you. Yeah. And He will be your provider. And He will be the one who's going to meet you. Yeah. Left or right. Mm -hmm. He will make a way, there is no way. He'll give you a testimony so that people can glorify and magnify our Lord. Yes. And he has not changed. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yes. Amen. Amen. Oh, yeah, our community, I forgot about that. With revival, people are blessed. Our business people are blessed. See, God is interested in that. In you. God is interested in your business. God is interested in whatever you do. It's impossible. It'll be a blessing for you. We have favor with government. Amen. With revival comes great blessings. My budget is now as cheap as I am. $60,000. Running community. When I left two years ago, we have an airline. My air, our airline paid $10 million. We don't even have a quick work with millionaires. <laughs> So when I present a financial statement to our people, I say, look at the forest. See the number of trees. That's how much money we have in the bank. We've got to stress the account. Our construction company. We were known as a, a chainsaw chain author. Two years ago, we made over one billion dollars of contracts alone. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yes. 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 We signed an agreement that are with the provincial government that are 1.2 billion dollars. We signed agreements with the federal government that are 1.4 billion dollars. You be faithful with the living. Do you think we have a, a quick word for billion? <laughs> it's got to help you. Trust me. It's a lot of money. <laughs> and it's 
It's amazing how you can turn around a nation. Our nation was shaken by the power of God. Our nation with, with a boldness of a young woman. Not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Full of the Holy Ghost and fire. The King. And we as the people have accepted the gospel. Father in our lives. We seek God like nobody did. Yes. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things shall be added. God knows what you want. Because yes. yes. most people's attitude is this. When the Bible says ask, you shall receive. How can it show you going to do? Our God knows where I am. He knows everything. He knows where I live. He knows my address. If he wants to touch me, he can touch me. You must pursue him. Yeah. You must seek him. Yeah. You must run after him. Yeah. You must ask him to touch you, to fill you, that you will never be the same again. Because you and I want something. We have loved ones. We have concerns. We have issues. And you cannot give what you do not have. Yes. Right. So you better go stay in the presence of God. Hmm. You got to be hungry. You got to be thirsty. You got to be like Barnabas. Yes. Scream if you have to. Shout if you have to. Jesus, seven day, have mercy on me. Yeah. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. I guarantee you people tell you to shut up just like they told Barnabas. Blind Barnabas. It's not that God can't hear. He's not deaf. But there is power in the name of Jesus. Yes. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Call? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jesus! Jesus! Have mercy on me. Change me, touch me, fill me, use me. Amen. I guarantee I tried so many times to change that woman. <laughs> <laughs> Until I got smart and said, Lord, change me. Touch me. More than that, I also know that the Lord talks to my wife. If I can't hear the Lord, I'll turn to my wife and I say, What's the Lord saying to you? And then she'll tell me. I go, Right now. I may have missed it, but I think I got we will send 10,000 if you So nothing is impossible. Yeah. Nothing is impossible. If God can shake my nation, yes. He can shake Hawaii. Yes. yes. You might even start with the islands, right? Yeah. <laughs> start small. Yeah. <laughs> As you do your faith will increase. Then you will you'll attack the inland. The inland. <laughs> the gospel is free. Somebody has to pay his ticket. <laughs> Somebody has to pay their bill in order to go out there. Right? You know, I, I talk to these principles to my youth. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. By the way, yes, sir. I went to the Bible Institute. Yeah, I got my certificate. I got my diploma. Yes, and I got my doctors of the. Divinity, but I can tell you those pieces of papers 
I cannot cast out a demon so we know my doctor <laughs> Must be real in you. Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. Greater work in you, greater work outside. It's important in you, and yeah. for that. Yeah. Yeah. The Lord uses you, and we will touch people's lives. Yeah. The Lord uses mightily in our community, change our community. Where once we hanged out white sheets, cover our windows. A little yellow sheet in there. I mean, we're so poor. This pastor would say we go to KFC and look at people's fingers. <laughs> the reason why most people. Don't do anything just because of fear. Yeah. Fear paralyzes. Yeah. Fear neutralizes. Yeah. But we have not been given the spirit of fear. Right. But of love. Yes. Power. Yes. And of a sound mind. Yes. You are not crazy. scripture verse. But I'm going to share with you. You know, uh, I kept uh, I'm starting to read the Gospels again and, uh, and then it says okay, it's in John uh, verse uh, 35 it says, again the next day after John stood and two of his disciples and looking behind, upon Jesus as he walked, he said, behold the Lamb of God. Then Jesus turned and said and saw them following and said unto them, what seek ye? He said unto the rab rabbi, uh, which is to say, being interpreted, Master, where dwell that? He said unto them, Come and see. They came and saw where he dealt, and abode with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. One of the two which heard John said, spoke, and followed, was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first findeth his own brother Simon, and said unto him, We have found the Messiah. <laughs> they were waiting for the Messiah. They were looking for the Messiah. What did he do? There were two disciples. We never hear of the other disciples. But here, what did he do, Andrew? He first finded his own brother Simon. When was the last time you told your brother, sister, that you have time with Jesus? When was the last time that your friends, that you told them on Jesus? People around you. You see, if you're faithful with one, God will make a way. And the part of thank you. God give you a bonus. And as we read here, I'll let the next part. The day following Jesus would come forth into Galilee, that's verse 43, and find it Philip, and said unto him, Follow me. And Philip was of Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael, and said unto him, We have found him. Mm -hmm. When I read this, I couldn't function. <laughs> <laughs> we have found him. We went to find him. 
Gospel of Jesus Christ. You want a revival in this in your island here? Be not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I tell you, your gift will make a way for you. My gift was in politics for a while. God made a way when there's no way. When people told me you can't meet this person, you can't do this, he's a minister, he's too busy, etc. But God made a way. Amen? Amen. I'll share this uh, testimony. You know, uh, I was crisscrossing the country. I was so busy flying and all that. <clears throat> Doing what I do. And uh, I was so tired, I went into this church. I sat at the back. Preacher says, you know, I'm not preaching tonight, but there is uh, someone here that's going to preach. And he said, uh, Matthew, get up here. I don't want to preach. Excuse me. He says, you're preaching tonight. But I had a message. I share what I need to share. And when I finished, a young man that was sitting, I did not know, was actually a pastor from Toronto. He came up to me, and he gave me a note. And this is the note. It said, Be not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Be of courage. Be bold. Be not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I will bring you before great men. Oh, I took that word. Because uh, I was going to meet your president. <laughs> but who am I when my people call uh, Canada? Huh. Where's that? Quebec? Okay, then many Quebec. Crease? Who? Crease? Cream. Not crease. Cream. Who are these people? They did not know who I was. But every governor that I have met been in New England states. Vermont, Massachusetts, Governor Cuomo of New York. All said that I have to meet this president. But it looked like it was impossible. But nothing is impossible with God. All things are possible. Man may say this, but God has the last word. So here I am, I'm uh, in New York, you know, I was uh, at a meeting, uh, Boston actually, and I was at, uh, I'm not throwing names in the church folks, uh, I was uh, with Robert Kennedy, and uh, Robert Kennedy, and, uh, <clears throat> and he said, uh, there's a, a function over there at a Democratic Convention, and I said, uh, go there, he said, the president's going to be there, so I walked in, you know, hey, I'm going to see the president. I walk in and they tell me, oh, you have to pay $2,000? <laughs> <laughs> <You're right. laughs> you see, if you want to have a testimony, sometimes you have to go out on the mirror. The slice of key to a weird little man to see. I know the same more treatment. It was so small of stature that you want to see Jesus. Ran ahead and climbed the tree. And I go out on the limb, no matter what people would say. Yeah. There's something about catching the attention of Jesus. Because yeah. Jesus sits there with Zacchaeus. So there I am, uh, $2,000. Hmm. I had my credit card. I could have paid 2000 I had my own route card, I could pay two thousand. I had my own personal credit card, I could pay two thousand. And I'm gonna make a testimony. For I heard the word of God. 
I will bring you before great men. And I can, the world considers this. Your president is one of the great men. I said, hey, hey. What the? Went from my room. I love complaining to her. You heard what they said. I have to pay $2,000 to see this man. I have great respect for him. But I ain't paying $2,000 to see him. For well, you said you were in my gift, will make a way. We'll make room for you. As soon as I finish the four rings, pick up the four rings, just, ah, uh, excuse me. Are you a branch of Kung Kong? I said, yes, I am. He said, ah, uh, we're calling from the Democratic Convention. I believe you're here. Here a while ago. Uh, so I just want to tell you, um, a little old lady paid you $2,000. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> <Hallelujah. laughs> so I walked over there. I sat with uh, the late uh, one of the, Michael Kennedy. I sat on his table along with uh, other people. Also. Of course, when your president walks in, you have all the dogs coming in, you know. I was looking for a dog for help from the Reds. I was looking for a show. That didn't happen. We were calling the place, of course, you know, and the troops coming in, and uh, then the president walks in, etc. And they had a table in the front, front table with the stage, you know, that sort of place. Now. Anybody goes who the Democratic Zoo was there. <laughs> all the uh, actresses of my native actors were there. I need some governors. So there I am, sitting up there. And there, I was sitting there, I felt like I did not belong there. I had an attack, a spiritual attack, that I did not belong there. I felt like crawling under the table. And I literally was sliding on my chair. But I could hear a small, still voice. Be of courage. Yeah. Mm. Oh. Be not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And how will bring you before great men? Yeah. Boy, I can see the stir here. I sat on my chair. <laughs> Michael Kennedy looked at me, and Michael Kennedy looked at me, Are you ready? I said, Yes, I am. And I looked at me, and looked over the next table, and I said, Okay, next table. Mm -hmm. Next table. Mm -hmm. Next table. Mm -hmm. And then came to the late Senator uh, Kennedy. He stood up, walked up to where the president was, whispered in his ear. I said, Yes, he did that. I said to myself, When I tell the story, you do not do this unless you've heard from God. I sat there and I said, I know who I am. I am a child of God. Mm -hmm. Full of the Holy Ghost and fire. Amen. I ain't coming down. I'm not going up to see the prison. He is coming down to see me. I'm huh. a child of God. Huh. I sat down. I watched him sit down. I watched the president, the president gets up, when the president gets up, they were always up there doing it. He starts coming down here, walking over to where I am. And he says, uh, Mr. Kung Kung, I'm not sure. He says, I heard about you. And I said, yeah, I've heard about you too. <laughs> <laughs> started talking and everything. Anyways, uh, I got what I wanted. But God made a way with this little one. Yeah. And it looked impossible. Give them the way with you. Does this help you? Yes. Okay, we're going to have to tell them another story. What's wrong with your What are you teaching them? <laughs> Isn't God good? Yes. Amen, God amen. God is good. Yes. So I hope that uh, what I share with you encourages you, lift your spirit up, that you will share. You have found him. 
You can accept Him into your heart. He is real. You can talk to Him. He talks to you. You don't know what to do. Ah, oh, He'll lead you. He'll guide you. But what good is it to give it to yourself? But your neighbors. We have been in many, many cities in Hawaii. Probably in one year, uh, we left probably 6,000 people in the Lord. One on one. So the Bible says, you don't win souls as wise. So if you don't win souls, what does that mean? I'm sure. You gotta tell people. You. Mm. you gotta go out with them. Yes. And do a testimony. Yes. Mm. Now, I don't know who's here, who's not. I don't know who's uh, committed their lives to the Lord. But I'm here if you want to make sure. If you're not sure that you was back to that today. I'm not sure you're going to help. I want you to come up here and pray with you. If you have never given your life to Christ, why don't you come up? I'll pray with you. Now repeat this because I don't think it's going to hurt you. If you are not sure that if you were to die today, I'm not sure that you're going to pray. Come up here. The Bible says we're all of sin and consort of the glory of God. The Bible says we're raised for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. The Bible also says we're whosoever to call upon the name of the Lord and so to save you. Say this prayer after me in your heart and tell God. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sin. Wash me. Wash me. Cleanse me. Set me free. Set me free. Jesus. I believe. You died for me. And I believe. You come back again. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Give me a passion for the lost. A hunger for the things of God. And a holy boldness to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. I am saved. I am born again. I am on my way to heaven. Because I have Jesus. Okay. 
against us and we they were broken and you rebuilt a structure that blessed the people. I speak that over Hawaii right now, the structures that are there to do, destroy the lives of the people, whether it be in food, whether it be in the pharmacies, or whether it be on the land and in the water. Lord, I release your power. Lord Jesus, the structures against them, your people right now will be broken, demolished. All the laws that are against your people being blessed will be broken, changed in the name of Jesus. For those laws were created by man. They were created by man's thoughts, but they are not your thoughts, God. Whatever laws that are against you, God, and against your people, let them be destroyed. And let them and let new laws be applied that will bless your people. Father, in the name of Jesus, the very same thing that you turn the nation around, you will do the same. You will do the same for this country, for this state, in the name of Jesus. For you have called this state to be, Lord Jesus, you call this state to be a light, a light to the nations around you. So many people come here to rest, come here to find something, but they can't find it but with the gospel of Jesus Christ in every hotel room, in every in every place, at the beaches, everywhere, Lord Jesus. Cause your people, Lord, to be bold and full of the fire of God, that they will take this message to those people that are in bondage, Jesus. That this gospel, that not one person living or coming to visit this place will be able to stand before God and say, No one told me about this. Nobody told me about Jesus. But Lord, we pray, Jesus, that every person will have the chance.
Lord, she reap the harvest, she reap yes. the soul. Oh, mighty great awakening. Yes. A mighty great awakening like yes. the city in the past. Yes. Jesus, where you yes. turned the whole nation around. Yes. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the president, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Oh, Lord, bless him and his family. Protect them, Lord Jesus. Yes. We commission the angels of heaven to yes. surround him. There be a wall of yes. fire around him and protect him. But no harm will come to him and his family. Father, yes. in the name of Jesus, yes. thank you, Lord, for Hawaii. It is indeed thank a you, blessed Lord. place, Jesus. A blessed place, Lord. Yes.
that you'll be marked by people being set free. People being set free. Hallelujah. Let's extend our hands towards it right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, we release this ministry into the harvest field. In Jesus' mighty name. We release this ministry into the harvest field. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Signs and wonders and miracles. The dead raised. Created miracles. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we release you to your kingdom of Son, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, hallelujah. I can't even remember, I'm so caught up in the spirit that we even, we're still, oh, you're still here, praise the Lord, well God bless you, we love you. We love you, we love you, God bless you. In Jesus' name, join us next week again. If you're on island, come in, come see us here at Amazing Love Church. Look us up, JesusHawaii.com. We love you, God bless you. Hallelujah. Hey everyone, I'm Jonathan. Thanks for watching our video. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like. Subscribe to our channel and share this video with your friends and family so that they can be blessed by it as well. If you'd like more information on our ministry, check out the description box down below. We hope to see you next Sunday. Have a blessed week, and until then, aloha.